How's it going everyone? So this is the 10th binder on my channel that we're gonna go through. We'll do some analysis, talk about the cards, look at them up close. Uh, it's a bit bigger than some of my other binders, so it'll be broken up into a few videos. So today we'll just get into a few of the pages. There's plenty of great cards to go through. And on these two pages you can see there is a lot of the EX era cards and these are great cards right now because they're great for investors and collectors alike. And for the collectors, I think this is just a really hot era right now because the collectors that have been into it for a while now, they're, they're, they're more stable with it, they're um, determined and you know really um, wanting to continue with this hobby, they appreciate it and they want to you know go all the way with it and, and make this um, something you know a real hobby part of their life and these cards are the cards that were or that are the kind of the next step for a lot of people for the people that have been doing it and and been collecting they have gone through the Wizards of the Coast era cards and these are just kind of the logical next step because they are the sequ sequentially the next in the collection. It's also because these were the cards that a lot of people that started that are around my age that started collecting when the Wizards of the Coast sets came out, and when by the time Neo Destiny and, or the, just the Neo sets in general came out, we were getting a little older, and we decided maybe that we were a little too cool. For this stuff anymore we found some new hobbies maybe we started partying whatever it was or, or school or jobs whatever we do we, we kind of just had the next stage of our stage of our life and we felt that we had to leave behind this part of our childhood so with that being said it's this is also the era of cards that um was the big um downtime of Pokemon. There was uh, not a lot of involvement. A, a lot of the people like me got out of it by this time, by the end of Wizards of the Coast, right before the uh, Expedi Expedition and Aquapolis and Skyward sets, um, which is when right when they Wizards of the Coast sold out to Nintendo of America, and they were the, they were the ones that printed these sets. These are the first Nintendo of America sets, and so now that people uh, are getting back into it. They're realizing how really nice these cards are, how they're really a, a work of art. They bring back nostalgia and they're great to collect. It's a great hobby and there's a lot of fun to be had t by doing it. So people that are um, establishing their careers now, um, they're able to get back into it and once they get through all that Wizards of the Coast uh, sets that they stopped at, now they enter into the EX sets. And I think the EX sets really bring a treat to the collector and investor alike. They bring a definitely a new look, a new feel, and that's what we're gonna get into today. So with these, the EX type Pokemon itself are something that were not showcased at all in the Wizards of the Coast era cards. They included the new this this bubble type of hollow artwork does a really good job of making the card shine more just at first glance of these they're much more glitzy and glamorous and shiny uh, something that wasn't really seen as much in the Wizards of the Coast era cards this is the sandstorm Kabutops yeah it's got the e-reader at the bottom while that was still going on This is the EX Unseen Forces Steelix. And all these cards are, you know, in at least near mint condition, uh, which is great for the investor and the collector. These cards, um, not all of them, I would say, are the type of cards to grade, although any single one of these is a potential solid card for grading. But maybe specific cards like this for the dragon collectors out there. This would be a consideration for the for an investment for someone that just simply likes to collect dragon and wants a high grade or just simply a graded dragon type set or salamence specifically. That's the EX Power Keeper Salamence. Um, 
else we got here? Here is the Dragon Frontiers Rayquaza. And I did a whole video. I had a complete reverse hollow collection of the Dragon Frontier set. It looks really nice in the complete set form. And something notable about this set was every single card came in the Delta Species form. And that set, uh, it looks really nice all together. If you, if you want to check on that, uh, check it out on my channel. It's, uh, I would suggest it. It's, it's nice to see them all together, especially with that stamp of the Dragon Frontiers. And you get to see every single Pokemon in the set in a Delta Species form. And it looks really nice. You get to see the whole work of art in one set together. This is the Rayquaza EX of the set with the electric type. This set, one thing to note about the Dragon Frontier set, like I said, this was an era that Pokemon was at a low point. So at this time, it, it seems that they reduced their costs by reducing the quality of the cards and the printing. And this set, you'll get a lot of these print lines. You can see it here. So that's something to look out for if you're looking for like a gem mint set, gem mint set, especially to get graded yourself. Uh, I don't think a card would make gem mint, even if it was in perfect condition, centered everything, and it had a print line. I think that would disqualify it from gem mint. So that's something to look out for with these sets because it's very, very common to have these print lines in the Dragon Frontier set. Here's the Unseen Forces Caesar. It's got that 3D, this was a theme with this era, they did this kind of 3D animation rather than that kind of hand-drawn look that was seen in the Aquapolis Expedition and Sky Ridge sets, which is, in my opinion, the height of artwork of all Pokemon sets. Here's the Sandstorm Typhlosion, similar type of artwork. The Meganium here in Unseen Forces, you can see it's a little more animated rather than just simply that 3D, but still a similar feel. Here's Feraligator. from Unseen Forces. I'll go over here. Here's the Sandstorm Raichu. Always gonna be plenty of Raichu and Pikachu collectors. I think this is a really nice artwork, having the ball of electric energy around it. It's about to do a Thunderbolt or a Thundershock. And you can see it there. Captures it really nicely. Here's this Tyranitar EX. We've seen this in previous videos. I've talked about it in regards to the fact that it has four attacks. I think this is the first Pokemon card to have four attacks. Um, the Ho-Oh from Revelation, Neo Revelation, is the first card with three attacks. If anyone knows of any other card before this with four attacks, please feel free to comment about it. But as far as I know, this is the first with four attacks. So it adds some history to the card um, and just added uh, kind of aesthetic, just having four attacks, which is nice. And I'm sure the, the players like that, having that um, opportunity to choose like that. This Dragonite EX is from Dragon Frontiers. I just sold one of these a couple weeks ago in auction. It was a mint to near mint variation and it sold for, I believe, above $80. This one has a little bit of wear on the borders, on the corners especially, you can see. So this one will be a near mint. So I think, you know, it'll still be around that $60 kind of price point. And I'll probably let it go again in an auction style. Although a lot of these, see, since uh, when choosing, that's a big part of 
uh, selling cards is choosing how you're going to list it. And since so many of these are cards that could sell, you know, that would that I would probably prefer to sell in an auction format because they're so in demand and the market is so much so changing quickly right now and prices are changing. Uh, only problem is that uh, it's not good to put too many cards up at once in an auction format because there's not not everyone can that is buying these cards can afford to bid on that many cards so you're going to lose potential people that could have bought them on different weeks if it was spread out so it's going to be something i'll have to consider when i'm listing these cards here is the fire red leaf green charizard ex and i think this is a this charizard art i'm really falling in love with uh, I, ha I haven't owned one of these before this, and I really like how the hollow pattern kind of extenuates the fire coming out of Charizard's mouth. So I think, so you can see it kind of, it makes the fire kind of shine a little more. I think that looks really good. And just, just the pose alone with the fire coming out, I think it's one of the nicer Charizard artworks out there right now especially among the Charizard EXs. So this one, this will be a fairly expensive card. It's in near mint condition, mint and near mint. It's got some tiny little nicks. But beautiful card though. Even, you know, and this is, this is a card I would say, even with those, with those nicks, it, it being a Charizard, it's going to be worth grading. I don't know if I will grade it yet. That's something I'm going to have to consider. Here's the Fire Red Leaf Green Venusaur. And the Fire Red Leaf Green Blastoise. So it's kind of cool to see, especially for the collectors, that, you know, they've, they've got their base set Charizard Blastoise and Venusaur. And you can really see the kind of the progression of artwork uh, in this set at, at this time. It was about 2006 or seven, I believe, that this set was released. So you can really see how the artwork has changed. You know, they're a little a bit more glitzy now, a little more glamorous, a little more shiny. Um, there's a little more character to the Pokemon rather than the first ones. But this melodic now this is the ex emerald melodic ex emerald i i would say is another one of the ex sets that might have been printed less lesser than some of the others like ex hole and phantoms delta species power keepers and dragon frontiers the um the the print quality on on this set is a little higher um it's got the that hollow pattern, bubble hollow pattern around the borders, whereas you can see with the the Rayquaza from the from the, um, the Rayquaza from Dragon Frontiers, it doesn't have that bubble pattern. So you can see that there the the quality of the artwork and the card itself is a little better with this one. And melodic is just a I think it's just like the the beauty Pokemon almost. I've always really liked it, especially the shiny one. And this is just a really nice card. This is going to be one of the higher end EX cards in price as well. And here's two more Dragon Frontiers. The Latios and Latias, fire and water types. No noticeable print lines, which is nice. Oh, it looks like you got one right there. So yeah, really common to see those. The, uh, the Latios, not so much. Okay, so we're going to go backward in this binder to these pages. So these cards here, you can see the, these are the shiny cards from the black and white era. They were secret rares that were in various sets in the end of the set. They were um, past the normal set limit. And I really was excited about this collection because of these cards, because I think these are definitely an undervalued card right now. 
And I think there's a reason for that. I think that these cards, they're just not really talked about a lot right now. I think they're not as known, they're not as realized in the collecting community yet. Because there's still a lot of people that are moving along in their collecting journey. They are, I mean, really just now fully realizing and discovering the EX era cards. And we're seeing a really big increase in prices on those cards. And because those collectors that have gotten gotten into it and are stably collecting and in it um, are just kind of moving along to that part. This, the black and white era, is still a little more in the future and the collectors haven't got to this point yet I think so just not a lot of people are talking about these and they're really great cards I mean you know they're shinies first off so shiny Pokemon are gonna have a premium there's gonna be a special set of collectors you know shiny hunters out there the color variation on the cards make them special in themselves it also has that gold border they're secret rare and I think it's just a really, it's a special subset of cards. Um, I would say similar to the Gold Stars. I think these cards actually do have the potential to be kind of like the next Gold Star boom. And because if you remember, uh, at one point in time, even a Gold Star Charizard was a $70 card. I mean, you could literally buy it on eBay for $70. Now, in a mint condition, you might pay $700. So... Um, and that's just because at one point in time they weren't as the gold stars weren't as known about and they went by a little cheaper so I think these will be a card that becomes really popular shiny Pokemon are more known now too especially with hidden um, hidden fates with the release of hidden fates you can see there's a few hidden fates shinies on here and, and these you know the big difference between those and these besides the fact that these are so much older and out of print is that these are secret rares whereas the shiny Pokemon in Hidden Fates were just reverse hollows so they were in much more packs They're, the market is much more saturated with those cards and that was never the case with these shiny Pokemon these are secret rares and uh, you know just very and they were even released like the gold star cards to where there was just a couple released per set uh, in the different black and white sets and um, they were secret rares making them extra rare uh, to pull and the artwork's really cool it's always cool to see shiny Pokemon usually the color variations on Pokemon almost always look cooler than the uh, original color scheme on the Pokemon so it's always cool to have a shiny Pokemon and these also have the, they're, they're a high quality print of a card the hollow pattern is on the Pokemon and on the hollow area and on the face of the card itself so it's got a lot to it and uh, it's just a really nice card so with that being said you know that that's something to consider when you're listing cards so like so since um, these cards are not as not as known not as realized there's less people going to be looking for them and there's going to be less people that see them uh, in the auction listings these are the kind of cards that maybe people will find just happenstance searching through ebay see be like oh wow that's a really cool card and they'll get it um you know as um as time permits but with an auction format you really want to reserve cards like for for that that have kind of have a stable audience and a stable market price um, otherwise uh, they might go for a lot cheaper than, than they than they would just because it there's people don't know about them so with cards like these what I would probably do is list them as a buy it now with a best option uh, best option offer and start it at a, a higher end kind of price just to kind of put put them out there let people see them and, and kind of just be patient so people can that are collecting come to see how you know how awesome these cards are get, get them a little more known before deciding to sell because um, you know being a secret rare in a, an out of far out of print set uh, you don't want to just let cards like that 
go super easily. Um, it's good to be patient. And, and, and I think that they're definitely undervalued right now. I, I think that, that, that part of it, I think, um, is no doubt. Because some of these are only like 20, 20 something dollars. And I think these should be easily 40, $45 cards. I think I think mint versions of these, because because the thing on eBay right now, if you look, um, there might be no mint or near mint versions of these. So maybe even right now they be they probably would be worth around that forty dollar range. And this would be another kind of card that I would say is a good card to grade, especially you know if you have like a set of them. I think there is definitely going to be collectors that would like to have the complete shiny set of the black and white era you know there i also have some cards in this binder that are that have the shiny cards from the platinum series that were also similarly released in some of the sets they they weren't secret rares they uh were actually just a subset they had a sh with the number of it i think there was 12 different shiny pokemon and um that was that was how they were numbered at the bottom of the card, whereas these are the secret rare, past the set number. And with this Reunclus, as with some shiny Pokemon, you can see that the shiny variation doesn't change too much. You can see this kind of like an aqua color rather than the normal more of a lime green. That still looks really nice. And you can see that kind of textured hollow. Crocodile. Dark type symbol there. Here's the Garbodor. Let's see the texture on it. The textured hollow just kind of make it more of a sturdy card, just kind of increases the quality of the card, makes it a little more sturdy looks a little nicer the hollow it, it, it gives a different kind of um, look to the hollow it, it helps the hollow um, reflect light a little differently and it makes it look a little different which is nice the gold border is a nice touch to them as well I also have here the reverse hollow meganium from expedition the expedition set didn't do what Aquapolis and Skyridge did where the hollow cards had the H. This one didn't do that. But nonetheless, the height of Wizards of the Coast artwork, it's got that nice hand-drawn look to it. Nice environment backgrounds. And then of course here we have some of those hidden legends, shiny Pokemon as well. And last but not least, we'll just do this page for today. And we have some gold cards, all gold. So let's start with this, this Reshiram. And you know, this all gold look, I, I think it was really unique. This was, this was the era that started this all gold secret rare Pokemon. And it's really interesting. The, the, the gold, you know, at certain angles can kind of almost hide the Pokemon, but at the same time, it, it can kind of heighten it, too. And it just gives it this feel of, um, you know, like, precious feel. You know, gold is associated with a precious metal. It's, it's rare, it's valuable, and uh, it's, it's appropriate Pokemon. You know, we have the legendary Pokemon here in the all-gold style and these are the the artwork on these is the same artwork as the full art versions in the set so similar to what the rainbow rare does except unlike the rainbow rares where there's a ton of them per set you know there was only two in this one they also did a silver um, I don't know any of any other eras that did the silver uh, we can see here with the ultra prism sets they have the gold, but I don't know of any other set eras that did the silver card. 
So here's the Dialga, all silver. Looks really nice. Textured hollow. And remember, this was the set that they started doing this full art EX printing where the Pokemon was on the entire artwork. So, and I think Pokemon did this at this time specifically for the collectors because, I mean, it's great for the players as well. And, you know, if you're playing the game and you, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of balling, you know, you want to throw out your um, full art Pokemon. But for the players, you know, it, it, it was more cost practical to have just the standard EX form. And, and by the way, this uh, Raikou EX was a, a card that played well even in the EX form. It's about a $10 card. But these full art cards, I think they, they decided to um, kind of help out the collectors a bit and, and make it more appealing for people because they realized that a lot of people were buying these cards just to collect them. So with these cards, I mean, this, this really highlights just the artwork itself. The Pokemon covers the entire card, the holograph pattern and texture covers the entire card. And this was the set, this was the era, and this is Dark Explorers, uh, not specifically this set, but this era was, was when they started doing these full arts. And this, of course, followed all the way through to the X and Y and Sun and Moon sets. But I think it was a really good move by them because it, it does make it more um, appealing to the collector to have it like this. And it does highlight the artwork itself. And I think they did a really, made a good move by doing that. And they did a good job with the artwork. Here's the Groudon from Dark Explorers. And the Entai. You know, and they, they, put, they put a lot of color in it. Um, it did a good job to appeal to that, that, um, that aesthetic value of the card, and that was a great move. Here, this Gold Solgaleo is, it's not the the, pr the promo version, because it's uh, important to note that uh, this card is only found in the booster packs, whereas the promo Solgaleo and Lunala, the other, the, the promo versions were in that um, collector's box, um, so these are much more rare. And uh, this was, this was the first time they kind of brought back these gold cards since um, way back when, and I think that's a good, good decision by them. Uh, you, you don't want to outplay these really kind of unique, special, bright cards like this, and then devalue them as a whole. So it keeps these gold cards in a unique subset, very rare, very few cards that end up um, getting this special artwork. And I think it works good, and the way they're, they're, the way that they're keeping it limited is is a good move, I think. And here's the necros, the ultra necrozma. Here, um, I showcased this next Destiny's Mewtwo uh, a couple of videos ago, and I was talking about the Mew that goes along with it. So here it is, and like I was saying, I think they did a, the, the, the colors in these two cards is really nice. The, even the hollow pattern's got that kind of checkered pattern that gives it this extra dimensional feel. Uh, like Mew is like using its psychic powers to distort space time or something. And I think the card captures it really well. The colors kind of give it that um, psychedelic feel as well as the Mewtwo and the cards complement each other really well. One's a little has a little more of the bright magenta, the other one has the more azure blue, but uh, the set right here looks really nice. Here's the, the Mega Charizard. Went through many of these. Um, it speaks to the fact that there is a lot of these out there 
It's a great artwork, but the fact that there is so many of them has devalued the card. But it's also a good thing because it makes a really nice artwork, Mega Charizard full art card, of, um, more affordable to more people. So that's a good thing. Um, this is also a really high quality card and they did a good job of cutting them evenly. Uh, these are uh, cards that I've sent two in so far. Both have gotten PSA 10 and I just sent in a third one, hoping to get a PSA 10 on that. So it's a good card um, to send in. I mean, a lot of people would love to have a PSA 10 Charizard, no matter how common it is. And it's, a, it, it's great for any Charizard collector's collection and it's affordable. And it looks great. I mean, this is my personal favorite Mega Charizard artwork. I think the Flash Fire and the other Charizards where it just shows its face kind of up close. It was a little um, underwhelming, whereas this one shows the whole body, shows its horns, and you know, the, the, the different subtle differences between the Mega Charizard are highlighted here and they actually make, it, make him look better. So that, that's a good thing about that card. Here's the Flash Fire full art. Charizard, not the, not the Mega. And there's definitely there's a few of these in here. And again, Charizard, always going to be an essential card out there. It's kind of similar to that Dark Charizard, where it's you know be from behind. And lastly, we have the Level X uh, Rising Rivals. This is the Platinum Era. And this card was certainly the chase card in this set. Uh, it's one of the SP, which is special Pokemon. And the, the SP type of this one is the G type, which is Galactic. And the special Pokemon were unique in the game because, as you can see, there's no uh, evolves from uh, Charmeleon. Uh, you could play this one without having to love, to, without having to take the time to evolve them. So it was of interest to players. And it is the only level X Charizard you know, in, in, out of all the level X cards. So that makes it a kind of a special landmark Charizard card in this era. Um, there is a promo level X Charizard, but as far as the set Charizards that are level X, this is the only one. So makes it special and another card worth grading, of course. And so there it is. Um, there's many more pages of cards in this set, but today that's just the ones we're going to go over. Hope you uh, saw some cards that you liked and maybe piqued your interest, especially in these shiny cards from the black and white era. Maybe, you'll, um, maybe you didn't know about them as well, because I know, like I said, a lot of people aren't even aware of these cards yet, and I think this is going to be a great set to collect especially with all the new interest from shiny cards um, from the Hidden Fate sets and you know for people that collected uh, back in the day there wasn't shiny po there was no shiny Pokemon out for the whole Wizards of the Coast era there was shining but no shiny so there's the those EX cards like I said just sum it up great for collectors and investors alike these are the hot cards right now. These have people's attention. They are the cards to collect right now for the people that have been moving along in their collecting journey. And they are really great cards. You know, these are the cards we missed out on because we kind of moved on from Pokemon when these sets were released. But now that collectors are getting back into it and they're falling back in love with the hobby and they're really seeing how nice these EX cards really are and how great of a job they did. You know, they're, they're a total new look, but it's still, you know, it still has the nostalgia in it because, you know, they, they did a good job. It's got some, it's got some new Pokemon, although those were in the Wizards of the Coast Neo Destiny sets. So they're still familiar. You know, the, the, this is the set of Pokemon that will still be familiar for people that collected in the Wizards of the Coast areas way back in the early 2000s. And you get new looks of the original cards as well as the second generation cards. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And these cards will be available as usual on my eBay store, 
user my man Justin store is called my man Justin's collectible Emporium I'll be listing them throughout this week and I also have some really special um, PSA graded cards that I will be listing for my weekly auctions so stay tuned for those I'll do a video on those um, I might release that one first so we'll see so thanks for checking these out um, stay tuned for as we dive more into this binder and check out these cards thanks